Welcome to part two of my conversation with Dana and Jennifer. As usual, we're jumping right back in here, so make sure you've listened to part one first. In the second half here, we talk more about specific situations with legal implications that CRNAs may find themselves in, the rates and fees for different expert witness tasks, as well as more information about the educational course and how it's structured. Enjoy. Welcome to the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones, and I'm so excited that you're here. The Plan B CRNA podcast is the only show made specifically for nurse anesthetists who are exploring options outside of their traditional career paths. This is the place to expand your mind and your goals as we uncover new ways to produce side income together. Join me for some honest, unscripted discussions with other CRNAs who are transforming their financial lives. This episode is brought to you by On Call Capital. On Call Capital is dedicated to educating CRNAs and other healthcare providers about investing outside of the traditional stock market. On Call Capital also provides opportunities for you, yes, you, to create passive income and generational wealth while also lowering your taxable income through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure you do that right now so that you don't miss an episode. Thanks so much for joining me today. And now on with the show. It was like another rock on top of a rock on top of a rock and the end is carrying this load that is just, um, it's just all consuming. That's the best, best way to say it. Well, it's so. amazing how you can, you can get such extensive training and spend years and years of your life and then it, it can be gone like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, it really it doesn't take as much as you might think for, for these things to just be gone. I mean, failure to, to write down a number for entitled CO2. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about that one element was basically yeah. the, the linchpin of kind of everything. And yeah. you think, gosh, how many times have I not written down a number for entitled CO2? Yeah. I mean, I know Hundreds, that I have. Thousands. Yeah. So... Um, but the great, the great um, kind of once I came out of all of that, um, actually in the middle of it, even after when the consent order um, for Georgia was happening and I was working with my attorney on a pretty regular basis with that, because we went through probably, I don't know, 15 different versions of the consent order um, until I got to, to something comfortable that I, that I felt comfortable enough signing. Um, he came to me and said, hey, um, we really would like you um, to be an expert witness for us. And I said, well, what exactly does that mean? And he said, we really would like you to come on board and um, defend other CRNAs who find themselves in the position that you found yourself in. And I said, sure, I don't really know what that means, but I, yeah, I can do that. He said, well, I mean, we'll send you depositions. We pay you by the hour. You read depositions at home. Um, and then you might do a deposition, might go to trial, would pay for, pay for all that stuff, and you basically just um, defend other CRNAs. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much what I do. I was telling Jennifer it's really cool because there's a lot of days I, I get to stay in my pajamas all day long because <laughs> nobody cares what you're wearing or what your hair looks like or if you have makeup on when you're, when you're reading a deposition from home because they mail them to you. They send a paper form or they send you... Um, a, a zip file to open or they'll send you uh, a thumbnail and you basically I just sit here with my little with my little blue blocker glasses on oh yeah and um I push my little start stop button on my little timer here <laughs> and I read depositions and for every hour it takes me to read a deposition or an affidavit or a complaint or medical record um and it varies across the state what the what you can make. So this is I'm only speaking generally for what I what I decided to charge. So for all of that type of stuff, it's three hundred dollars an hour. Okay. Um, if I do a deposition, um, it's three hundred dollars to travel to the deposition, three hundred dollars to travel back from the deposition, and fifteen hundred dollars to do a, up to a four hour deposition. And then if you do a live trial, it's $5,000. Okay. That's so, pretty significant. I mean. It is pretty significant. A live trial, probably you speak for maybe. They take, depositions can, can take a long time. 
um, because basically a deposition is like a precursor. They do a deposition to find out um, what you think the standard of care is and whether you think the standard of care has been violated. And, and when you serve as a CRNA expert witness, obviously you're not going to be an expert witness for the defense if you think that the standard of care was violated, because obviously you can't defend that. Mm -hmm. So you basically read over kind of the basic outline of the case and you talk to the attorney and you tell them whether or not you think you can defend the CRNA and if you can defend the standard of care and if that standard of care was met. And then um, you read all the other depositions. They send them to you throughout the course of the, and these can take years. I mean, mm -hmm. COVID pretty much shut everything down. So I did, um, was it in April? It was, I think it was in April. The last one I was telling you about Jennifer, literally they had stopped everything. And then they sent me like seven or eight depositions all at one time. And it was like, oh my God. <laughs> so that ended up being like $4,000. Yeah. Where I just kind of sat and read all these depositions and, um, which just blows my mind. Cause that, that, I mean, that's one day. Yes. They're time consuming. They take a lot of time, but I can put clothes in the washing machine and then put them in the dryer and I can, you know, be doing other stuff as yep. opposed to you know, being practicing anesthesia um, and not being able to do anything else except for practice anesthesia. So, so it's ended up being a, a blessing for me for sure, because um, this is the only problem with being an expert witness. Um, as your plan B is that you have to continue to practice anesthesia. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to, within five years of an event, so say something happens in 2018, within five years of 2018, I have to have been actively involved in that type of case. So, you know, for example, like if you're reviewing an eye case, but you haven't actually done an eye surgery since anesthesia school, mm -hmm. you you're not really technically a good expert witness because you really don't have um, current experience. So, so um, yeah, this, uh, so, so what I'm hearing and processing is that it seems like there would be a fair amount of opportunity here for lawyers that are, you know, basically defending CRNAs and, you know, perhaps, uh, the patients' cases themselves, yeah. where they're trying to get something out of this, um, you yeah, know, because they ways. feel like they've been wronged. Um, mm -hmm. So there's room on both sides for that. Yeah. And then you've also got room for the different specialties as well. So obviously, you know, if it's if it's a problem with, you know, a, a GI case or something, you know, like a colonoscopy gone wrong or or whatever the case, uh, you know, right. Uh, yeah, then you so, need to be practicing that actual thing. So you, you have to, you know, either you're a very well-rounded provider, you're working in an environment where you're, you have, you know, that experience with all mm -hmm. of those things on a regular basis, or you just have a certain specialty that you really focus on. That, Correct. So do you find, um, I know that when, when I went through school and everything, they said, well, you know, OBGYN, those are some of the more litigious areas. Um, yeah, you know, they're the what, number one. Yeah. So can you, can you get into a little bit more about that? Which, which of the areas that you found to be pretty litigious or, or the ones coming across your desk? So the ones come across my desk. Um, so this is basically what happens. My attorney will reach out to me or any attorney because there's a network. They kind of have a network and they'll say, this is kind of a, this is a CRNA expert witness school. Um, and they'll call and say, um, would you be able to be an expert witness for, um, I think, let's see, the last one I had was a pain management case. Yes, I've done pain, pain management anesthesia in the last five years, or not necessarily in the last five years, in the five years surrounding the time of the event. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if, if it, I think the one I'm doing right now happened in 2015. Well, I was actively doing pain management in 2000, 2015. I'm not as actively doing pain management as I was then, but mm -hmm. I was doing it daily or on a regular mm -hmm. basis then. So I personally do a lot of GI cases, pain management cases, 
any type of outpatient surgery setting, because that's, I'm a 1099 and I basically do outpatient surgery center type thing. Yeah. So like if, if, so, so if they call me for a case for say a, a spinal or an epidural for OB, I don't take those t- cases because I don't have the expertise anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, they called about a central line case and I was like, I haven't done a central line since anesthesia school in 2006. So I can't, mm-hmm. I can tell you what, how they're supposed to be done, but I really can't tell you the standard of care currently because I haven't done them. So mm-hmm. I think you end up um, kind of getting more specialized just based on, on what you're asking what you're mm-hmm. currently involved in case-wise. So I haven't done any yeah. OB cases because I haven't done OB, thank God, in um, a long time, <laughs> since probably 2016, I think is the last time yeah. I did OB, 2015, I think. Um, so luckily, because I hate OB, so that's just fine with me. Um, mm-hmm. But I do um, a, a lot of outpatient. I did outpatient um, pediatric. So um, one of my cases is a pediatric case. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done outpatient oral surgery, outpatient um, ophthalmology, outpatient plastic surgery, okay. outpatient GI. So I kind of have a broad kind of base of outpatient surgery type things. Yeah. I cannot be an expert witness for an open heart case. I haven't done an open heart case. Also, thank God, since anesthesia school. So. Yeah. <laughs> So, so, yeah, I mean, it, so Jennifer, I, I do want to bring you back into the fold here. I, I know we've, we've kind of been been on the, the expert witness thing, but you guys are doing something that's really unique here where you're, you're taking a specialty and you're creating a, you know, I, I'm guessing that it's a webinar series, but I, I'm going to let you take over now and, and just tell me more about how you're structuring this CE course. Sure. Uh, do we have one more time? One more time for one more question from Dana. Um, oh, just, sure, sure, just, yeah, yeah. Just on the note of you brought up about um, the types of cases, because she actually brought this up Sunday night, and I was, it was kind of a really good take-home point for our webinar on Sunday night. But um, the case that you're currently defending, you said, was because um, something happened that was the surgeon's fault, and yeah. no one from anesthesia went out to talk to the patient or the patient's family member, and now they're suing anesthesia. Yeah, um, they, dropped, just, they did not. They did not sue the surgeon because uh, the surgeon went out immediately while anesthesia was still in the room and basically said, anesthesia screwed this up. Yeah. Um, and it's not my fault. And I'm really, really sorry that anesthesia did this to you. And I apologize profusely. And um, that surgeon was not named at all in the lawsuit, which I, is fascinating. We were talking about like how far does an apology go? That was kind of one of our topics and we were saying for anesthesia it's really difficult because even when something goes wrong you're still involved in the case you don't just walk the patient is still asleep most of the time or in PACU or whatever you're doing you don't just walk out and say I need to go say sorry but the surgeon can and the surgeon does many times and and it's fascinating to see how quickly a surgeon will throw you under a bus like just like that it was anesthesia's fault my Uh, my part went great my part no problems at all. Everything was fine. So, um, and how often does anesthesia bite their tongue when it comes the to uh, all the time. a surgical procedure? That oh my goodness, oh, yeah, that just makes my blood boil. So, they, <laughs> yeah. so, so that was one thing that was, so that, that was one thing that was hard for me um, with my case because I was at an outpatient surgery center and the patient was transferred to to a hospital. And I pretty much had, I never saw a single family member because it, like she literally went from, she came in, I didn't meet her family before we started the procedure. Um, and she left via ambulance and I didn't have the opportunity at all. I had, I didn't have any way to even get a hold of anybody to find out what was going on. Everything that I knew was coming from the surgeon. Um, and in my particular case, the surgeon did not throw the surgeon under the bus. Yeah. Um, she she really she didn't do that and and I give her credit for that um but she has a lot of other she had a lot of other issues on her plate so there was no way she could really do that but yes it is a fascinating um side of it because we don't get the opportunity that often to go out and talk to family members and say you know 
I'm real because there are there's a lot of studies that saying I'm sorry um, goes a long way in in litigation and whether or not you're you're sued and anesthesia just doesn't get that opportunity very often. Very true. Yeah, and I think that's kind of a, a good take home point for anyone listening to this, maybe even if you're not interested in being an expert witness, but just you know, if you're happy working in the OR, if you do have a bad outcome or something that didn't go as planned, make sure you do get to go talk to the family or even if it's the next day in the ICU, because, you know, we said the other night, if you're not at the table, you're on the table. So, you know, as an anesthesia, yeah. go represent yourself. Mm. When, mm-hmm. as soon as you can. So, so yeah, back to your question about the course, uh, the way we have it structured is you can actually go and um, opt in now to be notified when it's released as uh, CRNA expert witness.com. And we actually have where um, the course will be ready in July, but you can get um, opted in now. We have it on pre-sale and there's two CE credits that are av- available immediately. And one of those is Dana's full story that she told for an hour in Nashville it was a live uh, presentation. With a lot more was- details. Yeah, a lot okay. more details we'll, about yeah, the case. We, we and, summed um, it up very quickly here. <laughs> and yeah. you, even if you just want to go opt in, uh, we'll send you just her story. You can listen to it, uh, just the whole story for an hour. And if you decide to buy the course, uh, you can go ahead and get your CE credits for it. And then we have another great lecture in there as well. Uh, with It's another one of our favorite presenters um, that has, does a really good ethics lecture. That's also in that uh, the pre-sale, some of the bonuses. Um, the course will be where you can log in your members area, watch it whenever it's convenient for you. Uh, it'll be about, I think we have 12 modules, uh, that are an hour each. Um, one of them, maybe an hour and a half, two hours, but you'll get 13 credits with the class and then the two bonuses also. But, um, we've tried to make it where it's easy for people that, are, you know, we've some CRNAs work a lot. So you can watch when, you know, maybe if you're on an in-house call and you've got some downtime, or if you want to watch it at home, uh, just log in, you can stop and restart as much as you need. Um, but I feel like it'll be a good opportunity for a lot of people that are looking either just for, you know, some supplemental income or, uh, what we see as a lot of moms who, you know, they get into anesthesia and this is maybe a little bit more than what they had anticipated uh, for their commitments with trying to be a mom and, you know, work anesthesia full time. It, it's a hard to balance. And I think what Dana's going to teach this opportunity is great for a lot of moms who want the ability, like Dana said, that you can work, take a break, take care of your child, go put in some laundry, um, you know, schedule your schedule around your children's schedule. So I'm super excited about the opportunity to do this with Dana. And um, the other the other things just to jump in to add, we're going to talk about um, what to do if you are find yourself in a legal in um, a lawsuit. Okay. Um, my attorney is going to guest appear on several of the modules, and we're going to talk about um, how to defend yourself, kind of steps that you have to take, the legal process, what things have to be proved, what terms mean, what the different terms mean. We'll have a module on compact states and what that means for CRNAs. We'll have a module on um, consent orders and what that means for CRNAs. So it's kind of a whole legal, it's a lot of, it's 12 hours of legal stuff that impacts CRNAs and, and then, and then probably four or five hours of it is, is um, kind of dedicated to CRNA as an expert witness and um, how you get into it and, the training and the different, you know, things that yeah. you have to do. So um, I think it's going to be really cool. I think it's, it's neat that, that um, we're going to have an, it's my attorney as kind of a guest. Um, uh, he's going to kind of bring in some real life cases. Um, and he does a lot of, he does, um, pra- he does all medical malpractice cases. So he, and he's been practicing for years. So he has a, we're going to bring in examples of different um cases and how maybe a lawsuit might have been avoided or how somebody could have charted differently or how some, you know, we're going to have a bunch of examples of how to kind of do things differently. So even, I think it's going to be cool because even even if you don't want to become a CRNA expert witness, it's a lot of other stuff that can help you just in your everyday practice of anesthesia. Yeah. So, so, so what were some of the challenges in, in putting this whole thing together? It's, it's, it, I know that it's not easy to set up a conference or anything. So, I mean, and this is a, a completely different realm, you know, this is yeah. creating, you know, video content and, and whatnot. So how, what were some of the challenges you guys faced, particularly with, I mean, you, you guys aren't in the same place. I'm, uh, I'm assuming. Correct. I'm in Georgia so. and, and um, Jennifer's in Texas. Okay. So um, this is the challenge. I think COVID has really helped 
um, in this arena, and Jennifer can talk more about this, but we have become accustomed to this style of learning now and, and this style of communication because we've been trapped in our homes for a year. So people um, are interactive with Zoom and we, we do a lot of, um, a lot of the presentations are just Zoom presentations with Jennifer and I talking just kind of the way we are now, but with slides and, you know, different. Some screen um, shares. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Screen shares and different stuff. So it'll, it'll really be set up kind of, I mean, I think for this is probably exactly the style that we're going to do. And then uh, when my attorney comes, it'll be my attorney and I, um, you know, kind of talking and we'll be asking him questions and Jennifer will have kind of a, we'll have a set of a, of questions that we're going to ask and mm -hmm. um that i don't i don't feel like i think jennifer is an expert in all things um you know continue education related so the biggest thing for me is i don't know how to use zoom and we talked about that earlier i'm like <laughs> um how do i get a cool background i don't know do i push a button what do i do so like um that that's my biggest challenge but jennifer is you know taught me all that and We've worked through all that stuff. So um, I think right now it's just word of mouth and getting it out and letting people know, like, and getting people excited about the content of the course. Because nobody's really excited about continuing education. I mean, that, that's the bottom line. I mean, we don't want to hear about beta blockers anymore. We don't want to hear about, um, I, I, don't, I don't even know what I don't want to hear about anymore. <laughs> There's so much stuff I don't want to hear about. So um, I think this is something that we don't, there's not a lot out there. I mean, yeah. there's just not a lot of continuing education on this particular topic. So I think um, I think it's really it's going to be neat to it's not completed yet, but I think um, you know we, it started and we're in the process, and it's Jennifer is going to have a lot of editing to do to kind of get it like to its final place. But because um, it's due July first, is that what we decided, Jennifer? Yeah, I'll do it. out July first. So, and okay. I agree with her, like really no challenges so far. I think a lot of times when you're doing what you're supposed to do, things just line up for you. And I feel like, like I said, again, like Dana has lived her purpose that she took this horrible, horrible situation and has made it into something good. And by her sharing this, it's going to, it's already helped a lot of people, but it's going to help a lot more people. So I feel like this is needed by our industry. And I feel like, you know, both of us just continue our purpose of what we feel like we're supposed to do. Like the things just line up easy for you. And I've just found life in general. If something is, you know, really challenging and there's a lot of obstacles, then maybe that's not what I was supposed to do. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, not to say there won't be some hard days that we have to keep going, but I just feel like a lot of times when you're living just, you know, what I say in the flow state that uh, things just line up for you and fall in place. So that's kind of how it's been for this. Very cool. Very cool. Well, yeah. You know, this is this has been such a treat having you both on, and and uh, you know, as, as we kind of approach the end here, uh, I, I want to give you guys, you know, each a chance. If you haven't had a chance to say something that's maybe on your mind or, or whatever, um, you know, now would be that time. Any any last kind of thoughts or advice for people wanting to get into, you know, either the the CE business or or the expert witness area? Um, what's what's some advice you have for people that are looking for their plan B? I think Jennifer just really summed up really well just now. I think when you're looking for your plan B, if you're having to work so hard at making that plan B work, then maybe that's not the plan B. So, you know, like it, I think it, when you talk to people who, who plan their plan Bs have been successful, they've naturally kind of evolved. Not that it's not hard work, but like it comes together and it, mm -hmm. and it works. Like I know that Jennifer, like, she came back with this idea to do continuing education and she worked hard at it, but like it, it just, it came together and it was, she really felt like this was what she needed to be doing. And, you know, honestly, I was terrified, absolutely terrified when my attorney was like, do you want to be a CRNA expert witness? And I'm like, Oh, at this point in my life, based on what I've just been through, I am barely an expert at like getting in the car and driving to work every day. Like I don't, I'm not good. You know, like I, I'm, I feel so defeated and so deflated and, and, and everything. And then I did my first deposition and um, literally we finished and I, my attorney looked at me and he's like, man, you knocked that out of the park. And I was like, all right. Like, so it, like, it was like, 
yeah, this, I, he's like, you, you just, you did a phenomenal job. And it was that moment. I was like, maybe this is, I mean, maybe this is the silver lining and this is what I need to be doing with this because it was not easy, but it was easy. If that makes sense. You know, it just, it came together and I felt really good afterwards. And then since then, as I read these depositions, I'm like, oh, I know exactly what I'm going to say when this question comes up in my deposition. I know exactly the answer, how I would answer this differently or how I want, you know, so it, I think, um, expert witness is not for everybody. It's, it's not easy. You, um, and there's, some plaintiff's attorneys that are real bullies. So you kind of have to have thick skin and you kind of, um, so that's what I say to Jennifer all the time. Like I, I'm excited about doing the module, but I also want to say at the end of it, like, this is not everybody's gig. You know, just like, you know, selling wine. I, I could drink a lot of wine, but I'm probably not going to be good at selling wine. <laughs> or, you know, like everybody has their thing that they that they get into that they're good at. And when you're and and it, those pieces fall together and it's, and it's neat to, to see like apartment investing. I, I would never invest in an apartment. I would have no idea what to do. You know what I mean? And it just wouldn't feel natural. So. Well, um, thanks for the plug there. I'd like to plug my own business on call capital. No, that's, I, that's how we would lean into your expertise because we wouldn't know. So. Yeah, yes. that's right. No, I, no. And that, I mean, some good points there. Cause I, I do think, you know, we, we all have our own paths that we take and, and you, our own, expertise that that comes out of pursuing those different pathways and and so um no i I love that so uh ladies how can folks get a hold of you get a hold of this course and and find out more about you individually i'm gonna let jennifer answer that she she's the queen of all this information (laughs) (laughs) yeah and just to end on your last question too like for you know any crna out there like no matter how hard days you may have and you feel like you're on the hamster wheel like there are other options like Dana said, it may not be legal consultant for you, but but there's something out there. You're never stuck in what you're doing. You can always transition to the next phase of your life. So no matter how bad it looks, whatever you're facing, just know that it can be a lot different a year from today, whatever you're faced with now and your your whole life, your whole outcome can be different. So, uh, but to get to hold of, a hold of us is uh, CRNA, expertwitness.com. Uh, you can go and say sign in to be notified about the course. You'll immediately get access to watch Dana's uh, story, her presentation in Nashville. Um, if you have other questions, help at painlessce.com is a good way to get a hold of us. And um, I guess we're both on Instagram and Facebook as well, but yeah. probably the, the fastest way is obviously just to go to crnaexpertwitness.com or uh, the customer service at painlessce is help at painlessce.com. Yeah, and Bobby, if you haven't if you haven't logged in to crnaexpertwitness.com and signed up, when you sign up, you'll get to see the whole story of my national presentation and and some and you'll get to get all the little details that we didn't that we didn't yeah. in this go around. But no, I'm absolutely to watch interested. Just to kind of. Um, just to hear how it all played out and how it just went from bad to worse. And at one point I said in there to my, that I had said to my husband, how could it possibly get any worse? And then it got worse. Yeah. Was like he was like, I don't ever want you to say again, how could it possibly get any worse? Because it can. <laughs> so, well, I mean, um, yeah. For all of you horror fans out there, uh, right, it sounds exactly. like we need to sign up for this course and uh, find yeah. out what it's like for a CRNA to, to go through their own personal hell. But yeah. uh, you and know, what, Hey, yeah. you True. came out and, smelling like roses though. And I think that's the, the takeaway here is, you mm-hmm. know, like you, you powered through this and you gained more expertise and you gained just more advantages in in how you see the world around you now mm-hmm. that i'm Absolutely. sure that that shapes you moving forward that you can't help but be affected by that it's absolutely true and actually we're going to talk about at the end of the module we're going to talk about second victim syndrome and we're going to talk about ptsd in situations like this we're going to talk about um coping mechanisms um for not just if you find yourself in a lawsuit but in, in any area of your life like how strategies to kind of move forward from um loss or a lawsuit or you know just Mm -hmm. different you know that kind of i think that kind of is one thing that jennifer does with a lot of her um courses is she kind of ties it all back into how to overcome and how to come out on top of it and to you know find the silver lining in in things and um 
and I think that's the, what is what what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, mm-hmm. right? I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I, I want to thank you guys again for, for being on the show. This has been such a pleasure. And uh, I think that you guys have just, you know, dropped a lot of great nuggets here for people to to grab hold of and, and move forward. And hopefully with, so. little teaser, little teaser nuggets. Of, well, exactly. Of what they might be getting, <laughs> what they will be getting. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But uh, no, thank you both for being on the show today. It was awesome. a pleasure. It was a lot thank of fun. Thank you, Bobby. Appreciate yeah. it. Jennifer and Dana have put so much thought and effort into crafting this expert witness course for CRNAs. It not only teaches you how to protect yourself from lawsuits, but also about the ins and outs of the legal system for interested providers. And let's not leave out the obvious. This can be a really lucrative side gig for CRNAs across the country. While it certainly may not be for everyone, Dana and Jennifer have made it easy for you to learn more and to get some CEs in the process. I love how they tied it all together nicely at the end here, too. While Dana certainly went through a lot of hard times with her own license, jumping into the expert witness game was made easy due to her newfound expertise. I also appreciated Jennifer's suggestion of finding a certain flow in life. If a certain side hustle idea becomes too hard to implement, it may mean that you're not doing what you are supposed to be doing. Sure, starting and keeping up with a business can be pretty hard work, but there are parts of it that should nourish our souls along the way. Otherwise, it just becomes another job. That's going to do it for us today. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Plan B CRNA podcast. If you haven't already subscribed and reviewed the show, I'd be honored if you took the extra time. It really helps to expand our reach and get the word out about the show. If you're a CRNA who is interested in sharing your story on our podcast, I'd love to have you. Please email me at bobby at oncallinvestments.com for more information. This episode was brought to you by On Call Capital. They are dedicated to helping providers like you develop passive income and generational wealth through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. Feel free to check out their website at www.oncallinvestments.com and subscribe to their free educational email series. You can find On Call Capital on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also check out our YouTube page, where you'll find all of the show episodes along with other educational videos. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.